Hello, welcome to Pecan Corner. I'm Tina, and today I'm going to make Jess Pryles Big Red Barbecue Rib Glaze. Um, Jess Pryles is a, is a barbecue cook, actually she calls herself a live fire cook from Australia who has moved to Austin. Um, and if you may have heard of Hardcore Carnivore, and that, that is her line of, uh, of, of seasonings and rubs. Um, we're going to start off, I made the, I've made this once before, and uh, one of my youngins is a big fan of, uh, of, her, saw of her rubs, and so I'm going to make this up for him. We're going to start with um, Big Red Barbecue, Big Red Soda Pop, which if you can't get this <laughs> in the state that you're in, um, it's uh, basically a, a red cream soda with caffeine in it, <laughs> so uh, a cream soda would work uh, work fine. Um, so let's see here. I'm trying to see how. Where's my weight? Uh, there it is. It's two quarts. I don't need that much. Twenty ounces. Let me get me a, a measuring cup here. We're going to reduce this down. So it's going to be two and a half cups. Is 20 ounces and we're going to uh, heat it on the stove and uh, just uh, simmer it until it reduces down and gets rid of a lot of the of the water in it there's two and of course get rid of that carbonation <laughs> Okay, there we go. There's two and a half now. I'm gonna put this on the stove and get it uh, get it cooking. I'm having to. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some canning anyway because I had to make that extra batch of my my grandmother's hundred year old barbecue sauce for chicken. So um, I thought, well, I might as well do something else while I'm at it. So I've been intending to do this for a while. So now I'm going to. All right, I'm going to use. Um, we need my other ingredients together in the meantime. I'm going to use a cup of ketchup. And for this, since this is this is not something that Paul will eat because there's so much sugar already in the in the big red, that um, um, I'm going to go ahead and just use regular ketchup instead of my homemade no sugar ketchup for it. one open here if I can as my grandmother used to say if I'm man enough to do it <laughs> there we go that's not too hard to pull off some of these containers I tell you it's hard for me to open them all right now then Onion powder and garlic powder. Need a teaspoon each of garlic powder and onion powder. Onion powder is so, what's the word, hydrophilic. It attracts moisture. And so, boy, it'll clump up just as fast as salt will, if you're not careful. There we go. All right, there's a teaspoon, sort of. <laughs> right, I didn't need that other one after all. And my garlic powder, a teaspoon of that. If I can get it, it has clumped into a... There we go. I can get a bunch of it. There we go. 
little bit more just to make up. There we go. For general principles. All right. Teaspoon of paprika. And you could use, um, you know, you could use smoked paprika if you wanted. I'm just using regular paprika. I did finally break down and buy some smoked paprika because we do have some recipes that call for it. But it's not something that I've ever used much to cook with. Um, tablespoon of Worcestershire. If you're using any brand other than Lee and Perrins, you'll probably need a couple of tablespoons because it, uh, the other brands are a lot weaker than this brand is. I don't know what, what brand uh, Miss Pryles uses, but uh, that's been my experience anyway. Half a cup of cider vinegar. That's a third. There we go. Apple cider vinegar. Although, I, I've never heard of cherry cider vinegar, but if you had that, that would be great in this because this is going to use some cherry uh, preserves in it. Get that garlic there. There we go. Half a cup of water. Uh, I'm going to wait on that. See how far down my uh, my um, um, big red gets cooked down. Okay, half a teaspoon of black pepper. Two teaspoons of salt. Whatever your favorite salt is, it's fine. Two tablespoons of cherry jam. Now then, this is, um, where did I put my tablespoon measure? There we go. I had to buy cherry jam because we don't have cherries, so it's not something that I make. Okay, there's a little more than a tablespoon, so this next one I could be a little less generous with. There we go. Okay. This we did have cherry trees, but it does not get cold enough here for cherries. Um, they just won't won't make well because of it. Even apples are very hard to grow here because of the, because it just doesn't get cold enough. Okay, now Two tablespoons of, now, Miss Pryle's recipe calls for brown sugar. However, um, I'm going to use molasses um, because I think it's sweet enough already with the big red. And molasses has, the reason brown sugar is brown is because the molasses is, is left in it. Um, or in today's world, probably put back into it. Um, but, uh, Molasses is really healthy for you. It has lots of um, lots of minerals um, and blackstrap molasses even more so. In fact, if you took uh, a little bit of blackstrap molasses each day, you wouldn't need a multivitamin. It's got amazing minerals in it. Uh, we'll look here real quick. Um, yeah, this one's not as detailed as uh, this label isn't. But look it up. Go look up molasses and you'll you'll find out. And I'm going to have to put this over here to clean it up because like all other syrups, once you pour out of it, you <laughs> it'll get on, it'll uh, solidify and uh, uh, cement the thing to it if you if you don't. Uh, okay, and half a teaspoon of cayenne. He likes it hot, so I'm sure that won't be too hot for him. Alrighty, now then. Now I'm just going to mix this up, and then when my uh, when my simmering uh, big red has uh, has reduced itself to about half, I'll add it to it and add the extra water if I think I need it. All right, I'll be back. 
Okay, now then, my um, red, big red soda has reduced. This is another good trick that you can use when you're making jelly with uh, sodas as well. Uh, reduce it first, and then you'll get a lot more concentrated flavor. Um, now then, I'm going to uh, add the, the rest of this mixture into the into that that big red slowly so I don't splatter myself. Normally I'd do this on the stove top but I wanted y'all to be able to see it. There we go. And I'm going to cook it for another about a 20 minutes and then I'm going to put it into my jars. Now she doesn't advocate canning her. She just makes it up to use it. And, uh, and that's fine too. I'm going to just water bath mine. And uh, there we go. All right, now I've made a big old mess everywhere because I've splattered it all over. But I'm going to put it back and let it cook down some more. And then I'll be back <laughs> when I've cleaned this mess up. Look at that. <laughs> okay, I'm back and it's done. I didn't say earlier, you need to let the, uh, the big red cook down until you've only got about half a cup of it left. So you're going from two and a half cups down to down to half a cup uh, before you add your uh, other ingredients to it. And then you cook that down uh, for about 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes until it's all real well together. I'll show you what it looks like. It makes a beautiful, beautiful sauce. Nice and thick, coats a spoon well, pretty color, and a good flavor. And uh, um, I'm just going to water bath this along with my others. I'll, it's got plenty of vinegar in there. and uh, So I'm going to water bath it for 10 minutes. Um, but I'm not going to show that part because that's not what she recommends. Um, in her recipe, she recommends refrigerating it and using it within a week. And uh, so there you go. I hope that uh, you guys will enjoy this. It makes a it makes a really good sauce. It's kind of a surprising flavor if you like the if you like big red. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to move that to a smaller jar. I see. Thanks a bunch. Y'all take care, and I'll talk to you again soon.